So today is Friday, which means Friday Reads on my channel, and I'm very excited to be back. If you guys missed it, I have uploaded some exciting videos this week. I uploaded a book haul with a ton of books that I recently picked up, so if you haven't seen that, I'll link it, go and check it out. Also, I uploaded part one of my bookshelf tour, because as you guys know, I reached 5,000 subscribers, and I decided I was going to do a bookshelf tour in celebration because so many of you ask me for it all the time. So that's what I'm doing. I'm also doing it in quite a creative way. I'm really enjoying that. So if you haven't seen that, I'll link it below. Part two should be going up next week. Now on to Friday Reads. I have three books that I'm definitely trying to get to over the weekend. The first book, which will probably be a recurring theme in these Friday Reads, is The Fox by Sherwood Smith. I have been meaning to get to this for a while. It's very piratey so far. I've read the first few chapters. I've already read the first few chapters in the past, so I'm rereading at the moment because I started this once before. At the moment I'm kind of like trying to get back into the world a bit more and kind of remember who's who because it's been a while since I read the first one and if you've ever read Inder, you guys will know that there are a hell of a lot of names in this series. It is name central. So trying to remember who is who and what they stand for and stuff like that is a little bit of a challenge but I am liking it. I'm sure I'm going to carry on and make good progress with this over the next few days and hopefully the next week. I'll probably be updating you guys on this one in my Friday reads from now on because this is like 800 pages. It's gonna take me a while. Okay so I just got a phone call in the middle of filming from my sister saying that someone was at the door so went down, grabbed it, two packages just arrived. So an impromptu unboxing is going to be happening. As I was about to say, Curtsies and Conspiracies is book number two in the Finishing School series. I showed you guys in my TBR that I was going to plan on reading the whole series for these in this month and I have already read the first book. It only took me two days. It was a super easy fun read. I really enjoyed it. I definitely think that I'm going to enjoy this series as a whole. So this is book two. It follows a young character called Sophronia and she is kind of like a delinquent in the family. She is looked down upon by her older sisters and they're all a bit like, oh, she's just a wild one. She's not really fitting into the society, things like that. It is set in the same world as the Parasol Protectorate series, but it's actually set a little bit before that. So that's quite exciting because we do have a few crossover characters. And basically Sophronia gets sent to a finishing school where she can learn to be a lady because her mother is just fed up of having her running around and getting in dirt and just basically disgracing her. So she sends Sophronia to this finishing school. Little does she know that the finishing school that she sends her daughter to is not just a finishing school. It's actually a school where they learn all sorts of exciting stuff like how to poison people, how to be very manipulative, how to deceive people and learning the art of subterfuge and all of that stuff. So it's quite a funny concept. It's kind of like a steampunk and espionage version of Harry Potter. That's what I'd say. It's really, really fun, definitely enjoyable. And I'm super excited to go on to book number two. So I'm guessing we're going to be following even more of her crazy adventures in this one. The next one I'm going to be reading is Another Day in the Death of America by Gary Young. I started this one just after it arrived in the post because a couple of my friends are currently reading it as well. It is a non-fiction about America and about the amount of deaths that happen and really don't get widely known about caused by gun violence. All of the deaths that are spoken about within this book are deaths that were only kind of reported to the local community. They weren't like big news stories because they weren't massacres, they were just a single person being shot. It's just about the horrors of how very common it is to have gun violence and gun death um, surrounding you in America. Most people, it seems, seem to know someone who's been affected by it, even if they don't have a direct connection. So it is very tragic. It is very sad. I have cried once whilst reading this already because it is just really emotional, but a very, very important book. So certainly one I'm looking forward to reviewing for you guys once I finish it. I've got this stack here. I don't know how well you guys can see it. I'm sat on the floor right now um, and this pile goes up to my shoulder and I'm sat on the floor and it's all books and they're all my TBR books for this month so you can probably guess how uh, how tall that is, it's quite tall. So the first book I have to show you is one that arrived today, this morning actually, and this one is called Holding Up the Universe and it's by Jennifer Niven, who I have heard of before because she wrote All the Bright Things, if you guys have ever heard of that one I'm sure you have because I think it got quite a lot of popularity on 
YouTube, perfect for fans of John Green. I haven't read any John Green since Paper Towns because I didn't like Paper Towns, so I wouldn't say I'm a fan of him. And Rainbow Rowell, and I've only read Carry On by her, which I did like, so there's potential. I have to say, I really like this sort of like banner thing that they have. It's really cool. Everyone thinks they know Libby Strout, but no one's taken the time to look past her weight to see who she really is. Since her mum's death, she's been picking up the pieces at home, but now Libby is ready for high school. I want to be the girl who can do anything. Everyone thinks they know Jack Maslin too. He's got swagger, but he's also mastered the art of fitting in. What no one knows is that Jack can't recognise faces, a secret he must keep at all costs. Be charming, be hilarious, don't get too close to anyone. Then Jack meets Libby. When the two get tangled up in a cruel high school game, they're both angry and then surprised because sometimes when you meet someone, it changes the world, theirs and yours. And this is what the cover looks like. So lots of like ink splotches or paint splotches and then a really cool little marble. So I didn't request this. It just turned up in the post, but it has a very beautiful cover. It does intrigue me. I don't read much contemporary, but I am always willing to give it a try if it sounds good. And this one sounds interesting. It comes out on the 6th of October. The next one I have is this one. It is called The Hypnotist and it's by Lawrence Anholt. And again, I was sent this one by Penguin. I know nothing about this one either. It says, a powerful story of race and friendship set in America's deep south. Jack left his home in Ireland to become a professor of neurology at the Southern America University, where he hopes to keep a low profile. But when you have hypnotism and mind control skills, that can be difficult. 13-year-old orphan Pip has just been hired as a farmhand and carer. But Pip is black. The farmer and his wife are white. And this is 1960s America, where race defines you and overshadows everything. It's kind of reminiscent of things like The Help and Noughts and Crosses. So I like The Help and Noughts and Crosses, so maybe I'll like this. It comes out on the 6th of October. I was also sent this in the same package which I'm not sure why. It's basically a dream catcher. So I don't know if a dream catcher has anything to do with this book somehow. Maybe. <laughs> but thank you anyway for the dream catcher because I like dream catchers. I have a few of them on my window. So I'm going to stick this one on there as well. It's very pretty. Look at the little spiderwebby design. I like that. Let's go on to opening up the packages that just arrived in the post, shall we? Excellent. Right. Yay! So this is carrying on the theme of Gail Carragher books that I have recently been ordering. I ordered this one. It is Heartless. It is the fourth one in the Parasol Protectorate series. I have already read this series, but I loved it, so I wanted to own the collection myself. Very happy to have this, and I will be putting it on my bookshelf behind me because I have already read it for future rereads. I don't know what this one is. Let's have a look. Oh, I do know what this is. Okay. This is cool. This is, this is cool. I love the colour of this. That's really awesome. Okay, so this is a book called Ninth City Burning, and it's by J. Patrick Black. This one I was emailed about by Ace in America, who are part of the Random House Penguin Group in America. And it sounded really good, and it was pitched to me as, if you like Red Rising by P.S. Brown, you'll like this. And I really enjoyed that. So I'm hopeful I'll like this too. Plus, this cover is super cool. Like, look at the style that that's all done in. It's really, really cool. For fans of Red Rising, Starship Troopers and Ender's Game comes an explosive, epic science fiction debut. We never saw them coming. Entire cities disappeared in the blink of an eye, leaving nothing but dust and rubble. When an alien race came to Earth to make it theirs, they brought with them a weapon that we had no way to fight, a universe-altering force known as Thelemity. It seemed nothing could stop it until we discovered we could wield the power too. 500 years later, Earth is locked in a grinding war of, of attrition. The talented few capable of bending Thelemity to their will are trained in elite military academies destined for the front lines. Those who refuse to support the war have been exiled to the wilds of a ruined Earth, but the enemy's tactics are shifting. As a terrible new onslaught threatens the end of our world, heroes will rise from unlikely quarters and fight. Back. This one comes out on the 6th of September, so fairly soon. Hopefully I can get to this soon. 
it definitely sounds really, really cool. And I do enjoy science fiction that is a more YA focused for some reason. I just tend to find that I connect with that a lot more. So I'm really intrigued about this. Another one that I got sent, I actually already owned this, but Orbit wanted to send me another copy because the copy that I have is not the film tie-in edition, and this one is. It is The Girl with All the Gifts by M.R. Carey, and as I said, it's published by Orbit. They sent this one out to me. Um, you can see that this is the tie-in cover. It's got some of the cast who are going to be playing in the film. The film looks really good. I'll put a link to the trailer down below because it looks really good. I really want to see it, actually. But I do want to read the book first, so I need to crack on with that because I think it comes out in fairly soon anyway. But that is everything. So as always, let me know in the comments if there's anything here that you really want me to read super soon or if you've picked up anything recently that you've been really enjoying. What are your plans for the weekend? Thank you always for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye! Thank you for watching my video today. Come back and chat with me again